I didn't start. Okay, now I started my recording. So we are talking about interaction. This is the line of the interaction story. And let's start with the, the first point. Let me show the initial slides just for recording the, in a concrete way the story. Okay. Interaction class. This is the outline. And uh, what is interaction? When interaction is needed? If you think to the static display, like the Maynard map, the beautiful drawing about the Russian campaign of Napoleon, uh, basically it is static. All the information is available. All the information pops out by the sign. Minor that not a computer as a means for transmitting the pieces of information. He had only pencil and paper. So by the sign, he put all the information on the, on the, pap the paper. So you have no physical interaction. You don't need to interact with it. And uh, there is no visual analytics. You cannot uh, dip inside the story. You cannot reason. You cannot discover new things. And uh, all the data is, is there. Interaction here is not a key issue. Of course, you can think how to improve the situation. You can move this on, on, a, on a computer. And maybe you can have that mouse overing some part. You can get a precise figure. Hmm? Here you have some numbers, but you have no, nothing in the middle. Uh, you, you can have the, the, the more additional information over in the mouse, or you can trigger different scenarios or whatever. But in here, yeah, we don't need it. It is not because by design, everything is there. How we can classify interaction? This is the idea, the idea of Bob Spence. You have the, the space of the information, the kind, the modalities of the interaction, and you have the, the user intention. What is the goal of the user? You can, we can use these three coordinates to, to classify it. Let's go for a, a simple example. It is a classic step at the menu. You're looking for having some fun. You make a decision, you want movies, uh, music, uh, dancing, uh, and uh, you can select something here. You go for films, you set films. You have the films uh, in the city, in the center, in the West End. You make a, a decision, you are in the West End. You want to see musical movies, horror movies, science fiction, drama, or, or whatever. You make a decision for science fiction. And you have, you can do the, your final decision. It, you know what I'm talking about. It's a typical uh, menu interaction. And uh, the, pain, the main point is that uh, the um, represented data is not all available. You are presented with this initial. You don't. You have not the list of movies. And uh, as long as you move. Uh, here, you have, you have a portion of the data available. So the information space is discrete. You have, you have some snapshot, some subspecies. And the interaction is stepped. You move from year to year. This is one step. It was, it was, it was a, a concrete step. It's not continuous, it's stepped. There is no a transition. And uh, Recalling human interaction point of view, you need that the system should be responsive, meaning that if the, it takes more than one second to move from year to year, as you select here films, you click with the mouse, within one second, you won't disappear. More than that, it will be you bored and the interaction will suffer from that. You are easily lost when you are here. You don't remember what was the path you did. And you know an overview. 
of the story. And maybe you have a long past to remember. If you dealt with the, the old cellular phone, that was the typical way of interacting because the screen was very, really poor. And you have a menu for configuration system, agenda, uh, contacts, uh, and moving in this step at the menu is not easy because you have no overview and you are easily lost. You have also different scenario. Assuming that you're looking for a house using the price, here you have a, a frequency distribution. It, it is an histogram in which each house is a little uh, blocks here. And uh, the information space is discrete. You have uh, that the price has been set in bins. And uh, the interaction is, is stepped. Basically, you move the, the handle one step at a time. And the goal of the interaction is totally different. You're not looking for information. All the information is here. But you want to select a subset of the data. So the green is giving you the, the, the perception of what is the selected data. And this is the goal of your interaction. And the system must be much, much more responsive. If you are dragging the mouse, you want that happening very quickly. You're, we are talking about one tenth of a second. We, we want the fluid interaction here. Third scenario that is going to be more and more concrete today. You are drinking a coffee in a, a futuristic bar. And on the table, there is a video, a screen. And here there are something changing, picture, advertising. And there's no physical interaction. You are just passive. You are drinking your coffee. And uh, you're going to go in along this activity unless something here capture your attention. And uh, here there is a, a video about that. I don't know if you are oh. I want to be sure that you see it. But when Bob Spence did this uh, system and this uh, video, sorry, it was somehow old fashioned. It was a, a mm, it is a, it is an old fashioned video, but the idea is still actual. Today we experiment a lot of interaction in this way. You're looking to the news on using your phone, and you have other advertising. Um, pop-upping window. It is a, a typical situation in which you are not active, you are passive, you are exposed to new things. Other scenario. Um, you want to analyze something. Here this, I will show you a video soon. You have a, 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 an electronic circuit and you are changing the frequency of, a, of the signal. And you want to see how the components react to different frequencies. You want to understand it. You want to optimize the component. So 
the information space is continuous. You can move uh, on a continuous range of frequency. And the interaction is continuous. As long as you move this slider, the, 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 sh the screen will change. And again, you need the uh, one tenth of a second as a maximum time of response. Otherwise, uh, you will be bored and, and the interaction will suffer a lot of this delay. Let's move. This is a fast tempo classification. So we have this information space and, and user interaction. And we can have the information space being continuous or discrete. So we have two classes of information space. And the interaction modality can be continuous, stepped, passive, or composite, meaning a combination of two or more of them. And if you saw some example of a discrete information step, step we saw the Gaussian example, but also the World Wide Web, web the, the browsing of pages on the web is a, a discrete uh, story. And instead, this is a continuous in, in, in the in the separation. And, and that you have all the possible possible combination of that. Let's move now to the intention. It is the intention of the user. Why the user in, is interacting with the system? Basically, we have a three, the three uh, main uh, story that already discussed in other classes. It is learning. You want to explore the information space. You, will, you, will, you want to get some information. Or you are seeking. You are going in depth search. You want something very specific. Or you're just, let's say, browsing. Hmm? What is there? Or you are not uh, basically volunteering in that, but some, someone uh, pushing you with the images, sound, or, or, or whatever advice or, or, or what, what else. And um, here there is the part that I, I said that I want to not to dip so much. It is the cognitive activity of human beings. Uh, I already said that concerning uh, perceptual issue, perception, we have a, a really deep knowledge and we have to use this knowledge to design better systems. We, using the colors, uh, uh, the attentive feature, you know what I'm talking about. What about the cognition? How, how would the human brains perform and, uh, <clears throat> in, in, in activity? This is uh, a <clears throat> less explored environment. And the normals provide a, a very old idea very old because it's very old in the time, still actual. You have these two actors, the human being and the computer. And you have uh, the human being as a goal. And uh, basically, it forms the intention of what you want to do. If you step, in, for you see a plan for the, um, doing that, he executed the action. There is a change in the world. The user perceived the change, get some insight, he get an interpretation of the change. He evaluates what happened and uh, make a decision of a new goal. He start to think to a new goal. This is a, the typical way in which human beings uh, Proceed, and I will show you an example. <clears throat> Very simple to make it more concrete. Assume that the goal of the human being is to take a, a picture of an event. You are in, traveling. You want to get have a nice picture of a you know, sunshine, or something like that. So the, your intention is okay. I, I will do my by myself with my camera. I have a camera with me. This is my intention. And my plan is uh, select the sheen and, and, and the exposure parameter 
yeah, unless he, if you have a, an old fashioned camera, you do that manually or done automatically. But at least you have to make a decision of what to have in the picture. You executed the action, you shut the release. Maybe that's some feedback is useful for uh, um, doing that. And there is a, ch a change in the world. The picture now exists. And you have you, a, a way of understanding that is mandatory. You have the click from the camera. Also the modern uh, uh, automatic camera produces a, a sound that is similar to, to the old fashioned uh, shutter release of a mechanical camera. And uh, after that, you want to have an interpretation of that. Uh, you look to the, the to the picture, and this is, the time is depends on the kind of technology. If you have a, a digital camera, that is a a, a matter of, of a second. If you have a, a chemical film, you have to wait uh, a couple of days to evaluate the, your story, and you can make a new goal of that. You you can be happy with that. You take another picture. You're not happy. You again start in this cycle. And this is quite good. In, is good enough to model most of the interaction we want to do in uh, in Fovis and the visual analytics. So this is the unique part of uh, of the cognitive story that we use uh, in these classes. No more than that. Let's go for continuous interaction. It is now a new concept. This started to be applied in statistics in 69 because uh, people want to explore things. And uh, now, and this is still valid, uh, the, 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 power, the computational power is increasing day by day. And that allows for modeling more complex relationship more more um, more complex uh, let's say change in the world but the idea is still the same the user interacts with the, the control maybe the mouse uh, a slider an arrow on the keyboard and uh, the image change let's have an example with the attribute explorer it is a, a, an old-fashioned system implemented by Bob Spence, but still interesting because uh, it somehow gives you a, um, an intuition of that. I have to re release this. And uh, just a moment. Okay.
okay? As I said before, it is old fashioned, but there are some interesting points. You see the interaction is intended for selecting a subset of the data. And there is a, a few uh, ideas of uh, what visual analytics can be. You have the mean or the value that is computed on the fly based on the selection on the user on the data. This is an next example of basic visual analytics. You are interacting with the visualization, you select something on it, a subset, for instance, and a new data, a new value is computed on the fly to give you more pieces of information about your, your analysis. And there is also the, the idea of how to guide, the guidance idea that I will better describe in, in this class, giving you with the black color the the limitation that you can remove to get more house in your search. So this is a continuous interaction. And basically, the, the, uh, the intention of the user is to understand which kind of houses exist in a range of price or, or, or whatever. And so uh, basically, the in the implementation of the system should convey an intuitive way of to move, how to move on, 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 on this story. Uh, how to adjust the upper and lower limits of the price. Hmm? You have this icon, and this icon is giving you the idea, but it's not complete because uh, what is the meaning? Of, what is the interaction? You just have to click it and it's move automatically. You have to click and drag. Maybe you can reduce the ambiguity as you go for having a mouse over on the arrow. You can have this appear on the top, giving you the indication that you can move it left and right. Uh, there should be a, an intuitive way to do that. And even if it is, it is, it seems simple. There are some tricks that can help a lot. For instance, you can disregard the y-axis mass movement. If you are here and you're moving, you click here, you move the, the slider. If you move some up and down in the, in, in the y direction, it is not relevant. So you can kill this story. You can make that not happening. So you can disregard the y-axis while you're pressing here. And this is a very simple uh, help, but there are a lot of uh, simple solutions that are still neglected. One, one is, one, my favorite one is about PowerPoint. If I am in PowerPoint here, and I have, I have to go out from the screen and from then the show, and I have to share it again. I want to show you what I mean. I, I am using a lot of PowerPoint. And I'm really bored of, of, of this story. If I am here, yeah, I have this uh, green circle that is behind the text. There is no way of selecting it. I have either to move away the text and select the, the, the green circle or to, to do a range selection that is uh, getting it. And uh, in the end, you come up with the idea that, okay, this is the only way to, to handle the story. But uh, after that, I discovered a very old fashioned program from, from, uh, for uh, DOS applications in which you just clicking several times on the same point in a cyclic way, select all the items that are in, 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 the, in that position. I click here, the first click select the, the text. I click here again, and the second text, the second click is selecting the circle behind. If, if I have five elements stacked here, very simply clicking several times here, we provide that. But PowerPoint is not implementing this feature. So this simple interacting mechanism is not possible, and I have any time to go for moving, selecting, doing a very 
boring and uh, uh, disturbing activity, while a, a, a simple trick can solve it. Mm, this is the next example of what is possible. How is, is it possible to improve the the story? But be back to the presentation. And uh, so this is about the, the execute action. It's not a camera. Mm? You have to, it is a computer with visualization. You have to provide a, a clear means for doing that. And you have to support this situation. After that, you, you have a change in the world. Here, for instance, is the, the change of the color. Mm? And this is a, a possible, possible implementation. And uh, a repetitive ac activity here allows you for forming a mental mapping. You execute something, you have a change in the display, you have a perception, you have an interpretation, you evaluate it, and you execute again. And you have a, a sequence of uh, execution that uh, corresponds to a sequence or display changes. And you have a, a sequence of perceptions. And that can make you to give a complex interpretation in a very uh, little time. You can go having these changes every 50 milliseconds. If you saw the, the, the image of the, the movie before. You were moving the, the range of the price very quickly. And you can get a lot of intuition about that. But uh, remember, uh, you can uh, help the user to not be fooled by change blindness. If you move uh, from year to year, the display changes from year to year. And you can use animation to help this uh, change. And you can have also other tricks, maybe some snapshot of videos. And you, uh, you can have a, a sequence of picture here representing what you explored. And uh, you can have also some uh, pretentive feature that help your interaction. Uh, assume that here we have uh, this uh, electronic circuit and you're moving this slider mm, you have with your mouse up and down from low frequency to high frequency. And um, you see the relevance of different elements in, in the circuit in, in, in the sense that they respond in the same way to the, that frequency. And uh, you can have, uh, if two, the, two circles uh, expand together, you can have a, a, the perception of a correlation on a specific uh, um, frequency that can be done very quickly. It, it is exactly the story, mm? moving, uh, executing uh, something several times and observing several changes. I'll show you a video. I like these videos. They are really old fashioned, but they are, are very go, going to the point. Mm? Here you have your circuit, very simple. And here you have uh, your slider and look at it. So the idea here is very simple. You have the control on a single value. You move it at the speed that you want, and you can perceive it pretentively changes in the screen. And you can make a mental model going up and down on this. It is exactly this abstract idea of continuous execution, continuous changes, continuous perception. No, is enough. And yeah, there is a, an engineer, engineering example done by Bob Spence. It was about a lamp. You have a, an old fashioned lamp. It's not a LED lamp. It, it was a, a heating lamp in which you have to 
give a lot of power here to make it uh, uh, be, <coughs> be very high in, in temperature and emitting light. And this filament is uh, sustained by physical wire that make it on a standing in the lamp. And uh, you have different, different parameters here. Basically, the, the, the distance here, the distance here, you have the thickness of, of, the, of the filament and the curvature here. And uh, having this parameter, you can observe some stress during the, its behavior. This is very going to be very hot, and th there are some mechanical stress on it. Hmm? Here, 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 and here. And if these stress are too high, that will make the lamp to be broken during uh, its its working time. And uh, Bob Spence engineered the engineered the system to explore this uh, this story it, exactly with the. Uh, attribute explorer we saw before. Basically, <clears throat> you, you have the, the four stresses represented according to the movement of the, of the different parameters. Mm -hmm. you, 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 can, you, can, you can move it and you can explore your system in, in a complex way. Basically, uh, you have here a four dimensional space and you can. Uh, uh, observe it using uh, different views that are coordinated with each other. There is a video that I can show you.
Okay. In the two year, in a nice idea of visual analytics, in the end of this video, instead of moving the, uh, the handle with the hands and the searching um, in, in a human brain driven way, you can run a, an algorithm that try to optimize something. It is not enough, it is not totally automatic, but it's a combination between uh, your manual intervention and uh, some automatic analysis. This, this is the idea of visual analytics. And uh, no, if we skip it, let's go to see something more modern. Do you, do you okay? You, you may be bored that I'm just presenting on only all the fashion of the story. Something that is really, really now actual. This is called the cross filter. You have the link here. And uh, I stop the sharing here and I go for. Okay. Here it is cross filter. Cross filter has been designed basically for a performance issue. Here we have. Uh, a lot of, of flight and for each flight you have the, the time of the day, the delay, the distance and the date of the flight and you have a very long list here of uh, they are just the initial part you have 200,000 uh, flight basically around <laughs> and, the, and the system has been decided to to test the responsiveness because you can explore that in exactly in the same way in which bob spencer was uh, exploring the the lamp you can select uh, let's say an interval in the distance i am considering on the flight between 400 and 600 miles and i can move it along this story and and i can observe you can, uh, this is exactly what uh, I showed you before. You are forming a mental map. If you look to the delay, delay part, hmm, you can see how, how the delay is, is, is uh, changing. Oh, mm, this is not only delay. Hmm? Positive part is delay. Um, negative part is when you land before the expected time. So it's the other way around of the delay. And you, you can observe that uh, as Look at this, hmm? this uh, element. If you go to very long flight, it is likely that you are you arrive early, because on a long flight you are more 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 possibilities of arriving early. Instead, if you go for a very short flight, being early is not is not so easy. And so this is a a continuous interaction, but you can combine that with several slider. Okay, I want this, but only in February, March. So now I'm browsing, you see all the stories changing. So this video has computed in, 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 in real time. And this is the purpose of the system. The purpose yes, is the interaction with the user and the responsiveness. And it, it is a, an activity explorer, exactly as, a, as it been taught by Bob Spence a long time ago. It is exactly the same story. And uh, here, if you go to the web page, you get some details about the, the implementation and the in-memory storing of the data, eh, blah, 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 blah. But basically, you can see again, you uh, in which part of the year we have more detail, more, more delay. You, you, you can see browsing it. You can easily move, see these uh, bars moving. Uh, well, this is one hour of delay. This is minutes, 80 minutes of, of delay. You, 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 you can have some peak. You can, oh, here, there. Look, look at this. You have here. You, you, maybe you, you, you can perceive that something that is more is uh, three hours, something like that. It appears only in this, in this part of the year. And after the, it disappears, but also here, for instance, either. And you can, uh, narrow your search and in the bottom you have still the numerical data the, the the textual data that can give you feedback but it's just 
uh, uh, the, the first 400 hmm, on, in, 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 in the story. So this is still uh, around for different reasons. And uh, every look to this, it is a, we are still using it as a benchmark for some research work we are doing on, on interaction and, and the response time and, and something like that. I bet to my presentation. So let's move to step of the interaction. Example that we had before, hmm? a menu. You go from kind of uh, uh, having fun activities, music, movies, and so on. And you have a sequence of step. And uh, you need a quick speed here, but it's not the same level. It's not demanding as before. Before, we need a, a, a response time of, of about one tenth of a second. You, like a movie, you don't want the interruption in your perception. Here, you can bear till one second. Hmm? You click here. And in one second, it, it changed. This is this is fine. Here, and the exploration refers to discrete change of you. You move from year to year, from year to year, and so on. There is not a continuous change. And uh, also here, you can have a, a, a normal cycle behind. You are forming an action plan. You, make this, you need a musician to make a decision a single moment. Hmm? What, I, what I select here? Concert, film, galleries, jazz, dancing, and so on. And that can be sometimes confusing. You're here. And uh, for instance, if you're looking at the, the face, the movie, the face, but the face is classified as science fiction. And if you don't select the correct element here, you can be back between A and B several times hmm, before looking at it. So in this case, apart ensuring, ensuring the response time below a second, you can try to design this uh, interaction in a terms that it facilitates the navigation. This is the main point. And again, here we are somehow closer to uh, human computer interaction. Yeah, we are in the between, let's say, hmm? human computer interaction and visualization. During a step in the interaction, it is like it's the same, more or less the same that moving in the physical space. You have the following question, the same questions. Where am I? Where can I go? How do I get there? What lies behind? Where can I usefully go? Hmm? Usefully is, is uh, interesting. And very often it, it happens to me very, very often. How can I retrieve that uh, spot that I saw before? And where have I, I been? If you're navigating a complex website, all this story are around. They're easily lost. You don't remember where you, you spot something interesting. And you can worry about what is behind this link, what is the best direction in which I can do a selection. And someone investigated some indication for that, some, some solution. So during a step of interaction, it is exactly as, in, as you're moving in a physical situation. You, the, the, the navigation, it, if the navigation aims to reaching a unique goal, the, the activity is a, a wayfinding. If you want just to learn the, the information space, it's like a, a physical exploration, you're buzzing around. Or if you want to, to, you know what you want, you are looking for something that you know, a specific target, it is a pursuit. And uh, again, thinking to a uh, website, you can have these ideas, these activities, well clear in mind. 
And uh, there are some ideas of helping the user in this, in this story. And again, we are in the middle between a human computer interaction and, and uh, InfoBiz. First of all, there is the notion of Q. Q is a indizio in Italian. And the, the, I really like this example. If you are uh, traveling on the sea and you're looking for uh, an island, typically the island have, uh, the islands have above uh, some clouds because the wind uh, hit the highland, is pushed it towards the high, and that make the, the vapor co condensate, making up a, a, a cloud. And because the the heart curvature, you don't perceive the, you don't see the island, but you see the, the cloud on, on the top of it. You can see, if you're traveling on the sea, you see before, you, you see the initial point you see is, is the cloud. After you can, you, you can get an image of, of the island. So the cloud is a cue, is an, an indicio, an indication of a, a possible, it's not, mandatory, but it's a possible indication that uh, you have the, an island uh, below. So moving from this uh, idea to some metaphor, we can have a navigational queue that uh, you can put in, 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 the, in the, your visualization to suggest the user where to go. Where can I go for, from here? How do I get there? A sensitivity? The, the, the term sensitivity is encompassing a, a, a single movement and a single interaction. Basically, a, where to go, where the, the part where is the cue. The cue give you the, oh, the suggestion. And sensitivity is how to move there. You have a, a single, you have to perform a single interaction clicking the mouse, moving something, changing something on your interface. And that corresponds to a movement and information space, single interaction, single movement. The combination of two, these two is called the sensitivity. It basically, the Amanda's map is a, a navigational queue in information space. It's something that give you indication of uh, how to go, where to look at, here, yeah, I have a very, very simple example of sensitivity. Uh, you have a, a door that gives you the idea of where that you are entering a room. And you have a label on the door that uh, the name is cafe. So providing a, a, an indication of the where, where this door will open and uh, how open the door, you have here something that is uh, resembling out where to push the door. And this is, it has a, a high affordance. Affordance means uh, in vitro loose in Italian, is something that suggests the usage. Here you can push on, of it be, because you recognize it. Hmm? Here we have uh, another example from a website. It is about holidays, and uh, you have, you have, you, have, you can, from this page you can go to details about different countries, hmm? Europe, Far East, and and so on. And uh, the idea that the single movement is done, uh, the single interaction, sorry, is just clicking one of these button. And you will have a single movement to another page representing the details about Europe, details about the Far East and so on. But I don't like it because uh, while this is very clear, the, the, the affordance of this is, is, uh, is nice because you know that you, you know this, pushing on it will produce the door to open. The standard of, uh, of the web for, for, a, for a link is a, a word with, with underlined line in blue. You have to imagine that this is a, a single interaction point. 
So the affordance is not so high in my, in my opinion here. But this is just to introduce the terms. And uh, you can encode sensitivity. Remember, sensitivity is, is uh, how to, to reach something and is compiled by a single movement that is obtained by a single interaction. And uh, here we, there is the story of uh, attribute explorer and the color is encoding the sensitivity, basically. Uh, if if uh, green means uh, I am done, this house is uh, satisfying all my, my um, requirements. Black means that houses are filling just one attributes limit. And uh, the, the color gives you the, the encoded sensitivity. You, you understand that the moving this bar from year to year will include this black house in, in, in a in, in, in the result that will be green after that. So it suggests how and where to go. You want to move here. And here you have the, the idea of moving this, this slider. And uh, gray means uh, filling two attributes. White means uh, filling three attributes. But uh, why for the green and black, there is a, a clear sensitivity encoding. This system is feeling for addressing the gray and the white. If you want to address this gray, you don't know exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to move this, but you don't know which one are related on that. Producing sensitivity encoding for more than one limit is not easy to implement. Here we have another example of sensitivity. You have uh, this slider that is, makes possible to select the number of bedrooms. And the yellow part here is giving you the idea of the active part of the scale. Moving this from here to here, going to one to two bedrooms will not change nothing. So the yellow part means if you move in this part, that will make your interaction your single interaction producing a single movement in, in, a, in the space. Here, it's uh, useless. You're wasting your time. And here we have a, a very old example by Bess Naderman, a dynamic querying interface. It was a really innovative that time. You had, it is a, still about houses. If I remember well, in New York, but it doesn't matter. Each house is a, a, a dot on the map, so you can see how where the houses are located in 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 a map. And again, you have this slider. It's not you have not an histogram. Is 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 different from this encoding. Basically, uh, in this dynamic tree interface, what happened that you move your slider. And the number of red dots are increasing or decreasing. In this moment, you see that if you are in this interval of price, this interval of bedroom, and this is the distance between uh, your house and the uh, underground stop or your work working place or whatever, it is, a, it is a traveling distance. Those houses are satisfying your requirement. But if you lower the price or make the price higher, more dots will appear and, and, and so on. Um, and the idea at that time was to demonstrate that it was uh, dynamic, meaning that the query was uh, computed during your interaction. Now it is a well understood idea. That time it was a pioneering idea. But here there is no sensitivity encoding. If I move this on the left, will I get more houses or not? I don't know. The same for the price. Does exist a house with five bedrooms? I don't know. How many of them are here? What is in, in, in the middle? There is no sensitivity encoding. Here is a simple idea in which uh, you can put some red 
clients denoting houses that are outside the limit. You can reach this interface with the, if you have a, a red line, you see, oh, if I increase the price till that, I will include it in, in, a, in the query. It will happen, will be displayed on, on, on the map. And that was, a, if you remember, is that chooser exactly that, that, that idea? We have some gray cars on the top that select that you, if you include this uh, um, in your search, that we will um, basically include it in, in, in the result. So there are some, some this is included, this is a cars that are waiting you to extend the, the limit. This or these are two means to suggest the user how to move, where to go. And if there is, this is for sensitivity. Does it make sense move this slider on the right? Yes, here you know, here you don't know. You have to explore it to see what happens. Another interesting point is the residue. What is what is left? Hmm? What lies behind? Sensitivity answer this question just for the next step, for a single step. But uh, if you think to all possible step you can do, what uh, what is the con the the the, uh, the distant? Data, the, where distant means requiring more, more than one movement, a sequence of movement will produce other data. Uh, what is this uh, quantity? I give you an example of a residue. You are browsing animals and you have mammals, birds, fish, insects, and so on. And uh, basically, if you click it, uh, you have a, a, this is a single interaction, single movement, and you go to all the mammals. And the mammals, the term mammals here is encoding uh, sensitivity and residue because give you the idea of what there is behind. Uh, of course, you have you need you need to have the knowledge to understand what the meaning of mammals. Mm -hmm. I don't not go to search the way it's under fish, but also to understand the, the words they're using. And uh, there have been some experiment on that, on how to arrange this kind of interaction to be more effective in, 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 uh, in, uh, in getting the result. For instance, you have uh, 64 words arranged in a binary tree. Hmm? Here, it is a descent. You go for science, biology, zoology, fish, saltwater fish, and you get the merlin. This is just one, one of the possible 64 to power six, rise to six paths you have from the top to the lift. And uh, in, during this experiment, some people were asked to look for a, Find a merling, um, fi fi find a bear or, or, or something like that. And they have to move in, the, in this menu. And uh, they counted the errors. Basically, what happens is that the errors are concentrated in the initial part of the story. Uh, and the meaning that the, the residue is harder to represent at the top levels. When, you, when you're here, you are, you are asked the, where the mapping is, science on culture, you can get science, but it's much, much harder than making a decision from, from fresh water and set water. So errors are concentrating in the, in, in the top part. And uh, the idea is to try to increase the number of options at each level. 
Here we have only two possibilities. This is a binary tree, but you can have three options, four options, five options here, combining them on the top. And uh, that demonstrated that uh, here the scale is the other way around. That this is the percentage of correct search. If you increase the number of options uh, um, in the high level, the, the, the correctness, the search increases a lot. So uh, it is better to present the user with the more option in the initial part that will make them more, more precise, more prone to errors. And uh, this is why using uh, old fashioned cellular phones it was so hard because they had to present a few options in the menu initially. If you remember the very old fashioned phones, they had only a very little screen, in which you can have three or four options, exactly like this one, this menu. Now it is, it is another story because you have a, a more complex screen. This is not happening anymore, but there is something that is making me crazy. I really don't like the people designing the interfaces for computers. There is a new trend. They think that uh, people is not able to deal with uh, uh, several choices. So they are going to produce uh, interfaces that uh, resemble this uh, simple story. Because in this way, they think, oh, people are not confused. If I present to the people a few selections, few action, few, few single interaction point, they are not confused. But I totally disagree. This is an example from the interaction for setting the, the, the characteristic of a printer. Um, how many copies, uh, the, the, the size of the page, uh, and so on. And, the, and this is for Macintosh, from SX, but it's the same from, <clears throat> from other system. Basically, here, the user is presented just with the, how many copies? Do I have to create the, the printing and printing all the pages, just the current or the selection of pages? That's that. And if I want to change the size of the paper, if I want to change the orientation of the paper, if I want to deal with the, the colors of the paper, the grayscale or, or, or whatever, I have to go here. And uh, I click here, I am presented with a, a, a list of options. I have to remember the correct one. Why I can, if I want to print a double face, why is not here? Exactly following this reasoning. If you put more um, elements on the same screen, you are less likely to be wrong. If I want, I don't, rem I very often, I don't remember where I have to, to look for the double face printing. And I have to explore this uh, uh, set of possibilities. Here you have copy, copy a paging, uh, copies uh, a pages. There is, I don't remember the other name because I don't see them. They are violating also the other, the other human computer interaction um, point. Uh, recognition rather than recall. I don't have to remember all the possible options. I have to see all of them here. I am able to select one of them. Here I have to click here to have this pop list opened. But here we are talking about basically human computer interaction. Uh, why, while uh, um, we are talking in, about uh, infobias, but they are con connected somehow. This, this, this navigation is a, an interaction that you can have in, 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 in this system. And uh, I don't trust this idea. People are not so stupid. They can bear more options on the same page, reducing the number of error, increasing the, the correctness of, of, the, of, of the result. But I miss, I, 
I miss something. I, I, for, I forget to, to have just a moment. Maybe I, I lose the, the, the trigger point. After having seen, after the story, we, we did with the lamp of Bob Spence, hmm? the combination of several attributes for modeling, for engineering. You saw the video, it is old fashioned, but it, it was an engineering problem, interesting problem. Um, I want to show you something more actual that is exactly in the line of this, of this example. It is, it is about information retrieval. I stop the sharing and I go for, okay. It was a system designed for information retrieval engines. I don't know, you're not fully familiar with that, but basically in each information retrieval engine, there are some main components. Uh, like stop list, model, stammer, that basically are components that uh, are performing some pre-processing on the text. I am not an expert in that. I just worked with some people in that area. And we designed a, a visual analytic system for exploring it. And then just a stop list refers how to, to which kind of award you want to put in the search. If you are looking, if you're exploring a text, you want to keep out get rid from end or not uh, all, word, all, word, all the words that are not useful for the search itself. You, you want to expand the term in more general or more specific uh, meaning. And basically disregarding the, the kind of, of, of um, activity performed by this module, we have a, a lot of modules around that are open source. So you, 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 can, you want to remove the, the, the words that are not useful in your search, you have one, two, three, four, five, six components hmm, available for free on, on, on the web. And uh, the model of the search, the stammers, the same, you have, think that you, have, you can compose your system combining these elements exactly as the parameters that the Bob Spence was dealing uh, with for the lamp, the thickness of the wire, the curvature, uh, uh, and so on. So combining this creates a, um, a space of solution, a possible solution. What uh, he did uh, using the, the MATLAB-like uh, environment, he, he combined all the parameters and he, he spotted some solution. Working with some research, we did exactly the same. We select a, a corporal text. And here we are selecting all the possible components. We have a basically one, two, three, four, three source of information. So we are exploring a three-dimensional space. And we have a, a, all, all the possible combination of them. And uh, here it is the result. You can see that it is uh, basically, a, a, it is a scatterpot matrix in the sense that, that you have a, here the stammer and you have the model and the stop list is uh, changing. So we are exploring a, a three-dimensional space on a bidimensional plane. And each square represents one of the possible combination of this. And uh, all this stuff has been pre-computed as Bob Spence did on a server in Padua, working for uh, three or four months, exploring all the possible combination, taking all the possible measure on different data set. Hmm? It was a huge exploration 
producing a lot of pre-configured solution with different qualities. And this is just a system, a visual analytics system sitting on the top of this, of this data to explore the data, exactly as Bob Spence did. The Bayer exploration is not done by uh, changing the attitudes, but uh, is driven by, oh, you, of course you can change, you, I can exclude one, one uh, stop list. You see that your, my space is going to be simplified. Hmm? This is filtering. Is it, it is the same filtering the attribute in Bob Spence interface. And I, if I go for a single element, I have two, two possible values, but let's stay in, in a more complex situation. The same happens for the other stuff. I can kill one of these. You see some, you are killing a row or a columns on, on, on the single elements. Basically, each square is a, is a a system, and this system is done uh, using this kind of uh, model. The, the the yellow labels give you the the model and the stemmer you're using, and the stop list is a uh, three year, two cent year, whatever they mean. It, it, it doesn't care. Think of it as a combination problem. You are producing a piece of software combining different existing modules. All the possible combinations are, 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 are good. And um, yeah, the, the search is driven by, by, by the measure, exactly as Bob Spence did uh, for the stress. Mm -hmm. uh, here we have two quality measures, basically, average position. Mm -hmm. And um, for instance, this is one, but I can have other measure to use. Let's say to every position. Uh, uh, the, uh, we already discussed the precision in information retrieval. It's a quality indication. The higher, the better, basically. And uh, each of these systems is given, a, 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 has been given the, the value of the average, average position. And we can filter them here. And yet the, again, we have the interaction. The, the average position is ranging, you see, from 0 0.23 as a maximum to 0, 0 0.12, very bad system. And you have a, a, a bars that allow you to, you see, you have the interaction as the overing on elements of the bar, give you all the system that have the average position in this interval from 0 0.10, 0 0.14. Uh, but we have also the sandbox plot here. And if, if you mouse over here, you are highlighting the top elements with the highest average position, the 25% on the top. The, that are the best system that you can, uh, you can have. And, and um, you are encoding that with the color. Blue means good system, white means bad system. And you, uh, you can see this. And uh, another, another, um, and you can select also, you can click it and you can uh, filter to, to values. And you have some co parallel coordinates reflecting this. Here you have some interaction on it that you can link about. Hmm? Just to give you an example of a system, now in terms of interaction, what are we doing? We are basically selecting the component that is filtering on attributes, and the, <clears throat> you can filter of some additional measure. You're selecting the, the, the elements using uh, um, the value of some quality measure, some analytics that we performed on, on, on that. Or you can browse a multi, uh, multi-dimensional system like parallel coordinates, and you can brush on, on, on it. Yeah, let me reset everything. Here we have only the selection here. How to reset it, I don't know, okay. 
also here. There is no idea of the single interaction. I do this and I select some, some system. After that, I, you see, you, I have this feedback hmm? that means, oh, I understand I can brush it up and down. I cannot move on, on the right, but there is no idea how to remove it. Hmm? I have to remember that I have to click here to, to remove it. So you are in the middle, info is a human computer interaction. And uh, I can, uh, here I have another metric, it is the confidence interval. If the confidence interval is very little, it is very good because it, you have an average position, high average position with a, a little confidence interval. So the, the error variation is, is little. And again, for instance, I, I can combine this high value with the, this high value. No one is here. There is no possibility of selecting it. I have to stick here in the bottom part. Here there's no, no sensitivity encoding. In reality, it is. Let me reset. This number here is encoding that with this high value of uh, average position, the confidence interval is only so large. If I select a larger area, luckily I get more uh, indication, more encoding of sensitivity. And they can combine this with this, for instance. And uh, I think you got, I, I don't, don't, don't go deeper in that. It was just to show you how, it is not only filtering here. Hmm? Here we are exploring the data using a different interaction mechanism. And you, we can have also some visual clue. You, you see that uh, some, some models, for instance, when uh, I, we are using some models like this one and this one do not perform very well. Hmm? This, this light part means not good performance. And this is common to most of the story. If you have a, an overview of this, you, if you compare this with this, with this, you see that you have still this white part, light part, meaning that these two models are not very good. So you can maybe you can you can remove it from the the story. And also the this one, I don't like it. It is producing some oh now I am filtered the data. And now all my metric has been uh, recomputed. So these new videos of average position confidence interval are done using this, this, this uh, subset of data. And uh, you can spot easily some nice point. You can spot easily also a nice point here. And the system computed the, some best relative element of the system. And there are there should be this is, this is the overall best. This is the best in this situation, this one. And uh, you can ask, uh, uh, you can you can run other analytics hmm, that 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 can add or go in the, in the detail. Basically, you have some support from interaction, from selection, from analytics. But this system basically as the exactly the same goal of Bob Spence. In the end, you want to make a decision in doing your model, which are the best combination of your elements. And this is an open source element. And according to which data, because if you change the data, this is, it refers to different tracks of information retrieval, it changed. So a solution that is good for one is not good for two of them. And the comparison here is, is, is not possible. You can also select all the story. Okay, no, this is only for, for you, 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 you can compare one, one, one at a time. And this is exactly in line with the Influence Explorer. 
And there are some nice pattern. Um, you, you can have a crossing line here, hmm? make, make, making evident a vertical line here. This, this model is performing really poor. And, and the, there are some combinations that are going very bad. Uh, you, you can have here, this is, this is going, and it's going very bad because it's white here. Hmm? And you can explore it interactively. And I think that is enough for, for my, my point. And this is exactly a, a model revisitation in which the, the interaction is different because here we have numerical values. So you move the slider hmm, on it. Here we have, a, it is a discrete space. So the, each, each um, you don't see it in, in, in a, let me share my desktop. If you compare, this with this, the story is the same. You have some, uh, here you have some stress point and the, here we have uh, some quality measure. It's exactly the same, the same point. And uh, if I want to, to select the subset for the elements, I can filter here on, the, on, the, on, this, uh, on this bar and here I can filter here using the metric. I can also a slider here, exactly as Bob Spence. Uh, we prefer, we do prefer using the box plot because they are very useful. For instance, uh, in at, at layers. This, these are the system that uh, have a, a, a so a very nice confidence center. And you, you, you see a trade-off. If you want a, a very little, confidence interval. So very good system in, in, in that sense. The overall quality is not very good. Apart this, apart this, this is the best, but you are not here. If you, have, if you want this, you have to, you lower your expectation hmm? till, till that will be in, in, in this interval, hmm? in the lower part. So exploring here, allows you to, as, as the video demonstrated, to make a solution on, on, uh, on, on designing the lamp in a, in a good way. And also Bob Spence presented in the end of the video, a nice uh, analytic. It was able to ranging on the parameters of, of design to get uh, a combination of them. He had the additional problem that we don't have here is he, that was the tolerance. If you are manufacturing something that is a physical action, it's not like the software. So the position is not a, a fixed value, but is a, within an interval. You, yeah, we are not this problem. A, a stop list or a stemmer is a stemmer. There's no a variation in it. But in the end, he ran some algorithm to, to get a, a nice combination. And also here, we are. I am. We 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 have some some. I have to reset the story. But basically, okay. Here yeah, there are some some some. Uh, search algorithm that the era we are looking for the most stable system basically stable means that they have a, a, a good average position or we have a or, the, or they have a, a, a nice confidence interval and so on basically the algorithm that uh, helps the user to find the solution space as bob spence did so and i think that i can conclude here Close to the end of the class for today. The, I, I like this to show you this parallel because this solution, this video, I will, I, I will put the video on, on the web together to the slides from the book of Bob Spence. This is old fashioned for a lamp. And this is 
something that we did five years ago, somehow more recent. It's about the emerging field of information retrieval. But the solution and the way of proceeding was exactly the same. We precomputed all the possible combination. Bob Spence precomputed all the possible combination of these parameters using a MATLAB, sampling a MATLAB. It was a continuous space. Here we did the for a combination of everything. And he computed the stress. Correspond, you saw the formula in, 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 in the video. Each S1, S2, S3, S4 as a formula for being computed. And he computed the stress for all the all the explored parameters. And we did exactly the same. The, yeah, we're using more powerful uh, computers, and but uh, the analytical part was uh, very heavy. I said before, month of calculation on a server, three, four months corresponding all this huge space. And you are presenting a solution over the top of it. The data has been uh, already computed. We want just to explore the data, see relationship, correlation, quality, of it to make a decision of uh, the best or a good compromise for a solution. Also here, there, is, there are trade-offs. You saw that if you're minimizing, I don't remember the example, one stress, the other maximize and so on. Here we have solution that produce a good average position, but the, the confidence interval is going to be larger and larger. And, and the, they do not perform the same on different data set. Okay, I think you got the point. And uh, I can stop here my class on, on uh, interaction. <laughs>